Five years ago, John Morant was an undersized high school player that just barely got an opportunity to play college basketball at Murray State. He overcame all odds, he got drafted by the Memphis Grizzlies, and shortly after became a premier NBA star, landing massive deals with Nike and Coca-Cola. All to go back to the streets. Well, we can't even say back to the streets because he was never there in the first place. John Morant grew up with a supportive middle class family that even built him an entire basketball court in the backyard. So why does Ja feel like the streets are calling him? Ja was 5'7 his freshman year of high school, leaving him undersized, but he was known for his work ethic. He knew that if he wanted to get to that next level, he would have to be the most skilled player on the court to make up for his size. He grew up in a middle class family and Jaw asked his dad if he would train him. His dad went above and beyond and built an entire basketball court in the backyard. This would not only become the training grounds for Jaw, but also a popular hangout spot for hoopers and spectators and you also could get a bite to eat because T. Morant, Ja's father, was the grill master and he was cooking up barbecue on the grill. And his dad was not just a good cook but also a good trainer because we wonder how did Ja Morant get a 62 inch box jump and a 44 inch vertical? Well, we have to credit him because his dad got tractor tires and he had Ja jump onto them after every single drill and the hard work started to show. And T. Morant, Jaw's father, was actually a basketball player himself, and he won a state championship in high school. He was actually teammates with Ray Allen. T. was about to go play overseas, but the news that his wife was pregnant ended all that for T. Thankfully, T. was able to put all his energy into training Jaw, and he was sort of able to live through his son. He didn't have to force it upon Jaw because he loved the grind of training. Jaw averaged 27 points, 8 rebounds and 8 assists throughout his junior and senior seasons at Crestwood High School and became the school's all-time leading scorer with over 1,600 points. By the time he got to his senior year, he had grown to 6 foot tall. However, in college basketball, that is still undersized for a Division I school and certainly for the NBA. It would be Murray State's assistant coach James Kane that accidentally stumbled across Jaw during a two-day AAU tournament. If this never happened, who knows where Ja would be at today, but James went to get a bag of chips when he saw Ja Morant playing 3 vs 3 in a side court. At the time, he didn't even know who Ja Morant was, but by the end of the day, he had Mac McMahon, Murray State's head coach, on the phone saying, Hey man, you gotta subscribe to Brain Juice. Have you seen their content? Just kidding, just kidding man. Hey, I'm at this tournament and we have got to get this kid to Murray State. His name is Ja Morant. He's a guard at Crestwood and he's going to the league. I'm telling you, you got to get down here. Ja decided that Murray State was a great fit and they spent a lot of time building a relationship with Ja and his family and more teams would start to notice him at this point. However, it wasn't enough to pull him away from Murray State. He was so under-recruited that when Murray State offered him, Ja's mom asked if it was a full four-year scholarship. And James Kane laughed and told her that yes, it is a four-year scholarship and he will only be there for two. His freshman year wasn't anything to write home about, but that's because the team was not centered around Ja. It wasn't his time. Come his sophomore season, the team was built around Ja and it was time to show the scouts that he has NBA talent. He also grew to 6 foot 2 inches which gave him some help and he was the only player in NCAA history to have a season to average over 20 points and 10 assists per game and he led the nation in assists. He led his team to making the NCAA March Madness tournament as a 12 seed and they went on to upset 5 seed Marquette with a dominant performance from Morant and he recorded a triple double. The entire nation was starting to pay attention and so were NBA scouts and Jaw started to skyrocket up draft boards. He got invited to Chris Paul's elite guard camp and he was a projected top 5 pick and some analysts even had him ranked number 1 over Zion Williamson, one of the most sought out draft prospects in years. With the second pick of the 2019 NBA draft, the Memphis Grizzlies select Ja Morant. Ja came in and filled a need for the Grizzlies and he started earning respect from his teammates, fans, and others around the league. Especially with Ja being overlooked his whole life, 
he had a chip on his shoulder. His rookie year, he did not disappoint. He won Rookie of the Year, and he averaged 17 points, 7 assists, and 3 rebounds, but the Grizzlies failed to make the playoffs. However, his second year in the league, he showcased his ability to put the team on his back. The NBA is full of talent, but the one thing that separates a star and a superstar is the ability to dominate and take over a game. Ja was able to carry the Grizzlies to the playoffs, but they fell to the Jazz, but this is when the world was starting to see Ja bloom in the NBA as the Grizzlies won game one on the road and Ja followed up that game by dropping 47 points in game two. Year three, he made the all-star team as a starter and the Grizzlies are battling for a top seed in the West. The Grizzlies went on to sign Ja Morant to a five-year, $193 million contract at just 22 years old. And he is also getting sponsorships from Nike, Powerade, Body Armor, and more. This is when we started to see a different side of Ja Morant, a side that really nobody wants to see, especially from a professional athlete that many kids look up to and try to emulate. July 2022, Jaw was playing basketball in his backyard and a 17 year old threw a ball at Jaw and it hit him in the face during the game. Jaw went up to the 17 year old, got in his face and asked a bystander should I do it and proceeded to hit the kid in the face with a closed fist, knocking him to the ground. Jaw went into the house and got a firearm and displayed it to the 17 year old and he had his hand on the gun. Jaw told police that he felt threatened and the punch was in self defense. Several days prior to this incident, Jaw's crew was also involved in an incident at a Memphis mall where a security guard said he was threatened by the crew and one of Jaw's friends shoved the security guard. January 29th, 2023, the Grizzlies are playing the Pacers. The game starts to get chippy and this would continue between the two teams outside the arena after the game. There was arguing back and forth between the teams for 15 to 20 minutes, followed by Jaws crew allegedly loading into a black SUV and pointing a laser at the Pacers bus. There was no proof that the laser was attached to a gun, but let's be real, what grown adult carries around a laser pointer as a toy? This launched an NBA investigation, resulting in Jaws' friend being banned from the arena for a year, but they never were able to gather enough evidence that a weapon is what was attached to the laser being pointed at the Pacers' bus. Although this is one of the most serious incidents that the NBA has ever seen, things will start to get even worse for Jaw in his future. Jaw was out at Shotgun Willie's, a strip club in Denver, and he would decide to showcase his night on Instagram Live during which he had flashed a gun on the live stream. Ja would come out apologize saying, I take full responsibility for my actions last night. I'm sorry for letting you down. I'm going to take some time away and get help and work on learning better methods of dealing with stress and my overall well-being. Ja went on to deactivate all his social media accounts. The concerning part was the fact that Ja was in Denver because the team was about to play the Nuggets. So how did Ja get the gun in Denver? Was it brought on the team plane? And did Ja have it inside the locker room? The league CBA states that if a player brings a firearm on a team plane, the commissioner has the ability to suspend the player for as long as he wants. The only other incident we can really compare to this is when Gilbert Arenas had a gun inside the locker room and he was suspended for 50 games. And just as everyone is talking about the incident, more is released. Shotgun Willie's released footage of the club completely covered in cash, allegedly $50,000 in tips from Ja Morant. I'm surprised that the club would even release this much information, especially footage from the VIP room. They even released what he had ordered to eat. Hickory smoke wings, two platters of chicken strips and fries, a steak, and four strippers. The pictures they released were actually from the night that the team landed in Denver and Ja must have had so much fun that after they defeated the Nuggets, he went back that night as well. However, the second trip to the club would be the one where he decided to bring the party to IG Live. Oh, we mm. know that thing right. So, let's no, talk about what happened. Jaw left the team and entered a counseling center in Florida for a few days and says that he has to find a better way to deal with anxiety and stress. 
Ja went on to get an eight game suspension for the incident and he did an interview with Jalen Rose who had dealt with fame at a very young age himself apologizing for his actions however it didn't seem like he was too sincere and he cracked several smirks during the interview and he said that the gun wasn't his causing many people to question his self accountability the memphis grizzlies are the third youngest team in the nba with an average age of 24.2 and the oldest player on the team being stephen adams who is 29 years old so he is the veteran on the team and i give him props because of this the Grizzlies held a private team meeting because the team was 12 and 20 in road games for the season. Steven Adams called out the team saying that they need to show better discipline on the road and need to stay away from going out. The kicker of this story is this team meeting happened before this incident went down with Jaw. So Steven Adams speech must not have had much of an impact on Jaw and allegedly this meeting was specifically directed towards Jaw. There have been travel measures for the team to avoid post-game parties where the team would head home immediately after the game rather than staying in the city for a night. I sure hope Ja realizes what he has, turns it around, and turns all this energy into his game rather than the streets because anyone on the streets would probably trade places with Ja in an instant. Ja truly does have an amazing story and I really hope it turns out positive for the kid.